Tonight on The Roast, a British man is convicted of selling fake bomb detectors and gay marriage passes in France. This is terrible. The bomb thing, not gay marriage. That's great. To our first story tonight, and gay marriage has been made legal in France. Sorry, I'm just getting breaking news from Associated Press. They're reporting Barack Obama has been injured in an attack on the White House. Uh, this is extraordinary, and thankfully we have someone there. We'll cross to our White House correspondent, Mark Humphreys, now for the latest on this emerging story. Mark, oh my God, Mark, it's worse than I thought. Huh? The explosions, are you okay? Where's the president? Oh, this? No, this is my poster for Olympus Has Fallen, signed by Gerard Butler. You didn't actually think the White House had exploded. Oh man, they got you too! What are you talking about? Tom, the Associated Press's Twitter feed was hacked. See? Everything's fine. Man, you got pwned. Oh, well, that's just... It's not even funny. It's pathetic. Who did this? Yeah, chill out, Square, just because you got burned. And then it was the Syrian Electronic Army. <laughs> Those guys cracked me up. So, President Obama is fine? More than fine. And everything's okay there? Well, not everything, Tom. $137 billion was temporarily wiped from the stock market. But the important thing is that Obama is OK. In fact, he's feeling pretty darn good about himself. That fake tweet led to an outpouring of concern from the general public asking if he's OK. Uh, I mean, look at this one. OMG, Barack Obama, I hope you're OK. I love you. XXXXX, XXXX. Mm, she really wants to kiss Obama. Tragedy really brings out the best in America. Even fake tragedy. Like this concerned citizen. Are you OK, mother AP tweeted that two explosions kicked your ass out of the WH, bro. Rest assured, Broseph, Barack Obama is one safe mother... Hmm. Interesting to see that outpouring of concern. Thanks, Mark. Wait a minute. I know that face. You're either thinking up some crazy scheme or you're holding in a poo. Wait a minute. You don't have thoughts. It's a poo, isn't it? Yeah, sure. A poo. Now to sit back and wait for those sympathetic tweets to roll on. Tonight on the row... Oh, you're still here. What are you doing here? I read you were injured. Was it from holding in a poo again? No! But hey, 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 good news, I'm okay. Oh, God damn it, Tom Thumb. I put on my hosting pants for nothing. Well, since you're here, I might as well make use of you. Nick, what does AP's recent hacking mean for social media? It means hacking got more evolved. Oh, so the technology's improved? No, 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 the technology's the same, but the fake posts are more advanced. I mean, a few years ago, these hackers would have freaked Obama by making his status, I'm a super gay president and love being super gay, which would have been a dead giveaway, having minimal impact on the stock market. But by posting something that was actually believable, these hackers have raised the bar for everyone. So now when I hack your profile to say you're mayor of Tiny Town, if it doesn't crash the stock exchange, I may as well just keep my obsession with your height to myself. <laughs> OK, Nick, thanks very much. Now get out of my shot. Moving on, and France has adopted a bill to legalise same-sex marriage, further cementing its capital city's status as the city of love, gay love, and the city of the Louvre, gay Louvre. The bill passed the National Assembly in a move which, according to Justice Minister Christiane Taubira, grants new rights, stands firmly against discrimination, and testifies to our country's respect for the institution of marriage. The bill passed by 331 whiz to 225 nons, and where New Zealand's parliament erupted into song, Gates. the French National Assembly broke into chanting and clapping when the results were announced. Which means that when Australia finally legalises same-sex marriage, the only remaining forms of expression will be poetry, mime and ribbon gymnastics. We turn now to our gay rights correspondent, Clark Richards. Clark, is Australia falling behind on this one? Falling behind like the kid at school who starts strong in the cross-country race, only to come last in a sweaty, heaving, red-faced mess. Ooh, I was that kid. Clark, surely we need to learn from these more progressive countries? What? Not at all. We've missed the boat on being the first country to legalise same-sex marriage, so we need to be the last. People only care about who comes first or last. No one cares about the bit in between. It's the first wives club, the last samurai. No one wants to hear about the middle of the Mohicans. And did anyone even see the ninth gate or the 13th warrior? I did. I'm the president of the Antonio Banderas fan club. He's made some good films. Yes, I loved Original Sin, but that's because it was the first sin, not a couple of sins in. Well, what about The Sixth Sense? That was a good one. Yes, but The Sixth Sense is arguably the final sense. Tom, if Australia can just hang back and wait on gay marriage till we're the last country, then our hard-fought slog for civil rights will be captured on the screen forever. I look forward to seeing it. 
Finally, a British businessman was today convicted of selling fake bomb detectors all around the world as part of a £50 million scam. The devices, called the ADE651, are made in the UK by a company called ATSC. They're used throughout Baghdad and much of Iraq. In fact, up to 20 countries bought more than 6,500 of these bomb detectors, which suffered from the minor problem that they had no working components, lacked any basis in science, and did not work in accordance with the known laws of physics. A defect that might have had something to do with the fact its developer, James McCormick, based his designs on a 13-pound golf ball finder. That also didn't work. Now, it turns out the first version of the ADE, called the ADE-100, was literally just a golf finder with McCormick's sticker on it, meaning that as a bomb detector, this type of equipment does not work. But then came the $40,000 ADE-651, a far more advanced device, including a special colour-coded sensor card that absolutely simply does not work. And that's devastating, because Mr McCormick claimed it could detect everything from explosives to elephants, including narcotics, ivory and hidden people. And even though this bomb slash ivory slash money slash hidden human detector was obviously fake, the United Nations and 20 countries fell for it. Why? Because they wanted it to exist so badly they refused to admit it couldn't. Really, the only thing war-torn countries in the United Nations could want more is a device that keeps everyone alive forever. Funny you should mention that, Tom. Is that Rachel Corbett from Roast for You? Good evening, Rachel. What have you got for us tonight? Tom, do you ever worry about dying? I'm worrying about it right now. Well, then I've got the impossibly perfect, too good to be true product just for you. Let's take a look. Introducing the Death Preventer Pro. Unlike traditional death preventers, the Death Preventer Pro uses trademarked feline technology that somehow converts a cat's spare life into a protective radioactive field. I don't believe you. F you, it totally works. Just ask our paid employee and recent dead man, Jazz Twemlo. This is me before I had the Death Preventer Pro. Ugh, I was 300 kilos and so dead. But now, with the Death Preventer Pro, I'll never have to be dead and fat again. That's what I look like now. I'd recommend the Death Preventer Pro to anyone who doesn't want to die. The Death Preventer Pro. We promise it works. Wow, Rachel, I can't believe what you're telling me is true. But I want to, so I will. How can I buy 16 of these right now? Well, Tom, order now and the Death Preventer Pro won't cost you $13.95. It can't be lower than $13.95. It's not. It's $39,995 and yours in just one upfront cash-only payment. Rachel, I want to believe you so badly it hurts, but I feel like I should test the Death Preventer Pro before I buy it. Tom, would I lie about a product I'm trying to sell you? No, I guess not. And if you aren't completely satisfied and alive after using your Death Preventer Pro, we'll give you a full refund of your payment, less delivery. Well, with that kind of promise, I can't afford not to take it. I just bought the Death Preventer Pro and I'm going to jump off the studio roof right now. Tonight on The Roast. It's the end. Good night. <laughs>